Okay, welcome to Kabbalah of Adam. Today we are going to continue studying in Isaiah 52, 53, uh, mostly in 53. I am going to do a short review in the last few verses of 52 because 52, 53 is only a continuation of 52. Um, it's the same sugia, so we got to know that. And this is a part of what a lot of people call the forbidden chapters, saying that uh, Judaism, a.k.a. the rabbis, don't talk about this, don't know anything about it. And so I'm here to show that that is a complete falsehood and a lie. So without further ado, let's say a prayer, and we will get right into the sources on Isaiah 53. Root of the universe and master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor? That is the reason we plead before you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins, and that they should not bring separation between you and us. May it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as a room of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. May their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study and by their merit enlighten our eyes in our learning, as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel, open my eyes so that I will see wonders from your Torah, because from his mouth God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor for you, God, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody, online. A quick review. I will read Isaiah 52, 13 through through 15, and we will uh, highlight some of those main topics and main points that we were going over, and then we will proceed into 53. Behold, my servant will succeed. He will be exalted and become high and exceedingly lofty, just as multitudes were astonished over you, saying his appearance is too marred to be a man and his visage to be human. We learned that word last week was Adam. So many, uh, so will the many nations exclaim about him. The kings will shut their mouths. All of the uh, teachers of the nations, it says their tongues will dissolve in their mouths. Therefore, their mouths will be shut. <clears throat> and for they will see that which had never been told to them. And they will perceive things that they have never heard. Remember, we, have, we had seeing and hearing and seeing and hearing. That's Abba, it's Absog, Absog, Abba Ima. So this is Hokma Bina. This is, this is the lights that are coming from the, the word uh, Yaskil, where it says we'll succeed. The word Yaskil is Gematria 370. These are the lights of Atika Kadesha. So <clears throat> basically, and my servant, my Evid, we, we found last week there are many, many, uh, holographic uh, principles that go into my servant. Sometimes it's Jacob, sometimes it's Israel, sometimes it's Prot, sometimes it's Klau. And now, <clears throat> throughout all of our studies, even through last week, we're, we're going to find that it, there's about 10 things that my servant means. Okay? There are 10 things through the sources in the uh, Arizal, the Leshem, Ravali, and the Gaona Vilna. They all say it's this, one says it's this, one says it's this, one says they're building a part suf. And the reason it doesn't name anybody in Isaiah 53, like Israel or Jacob or Moshe or whatever, is because it is a part suf. Because they're there are many things that have been rejected and despised. All right? So just think about it for a second. <clears throat> Has the Torah been rejected? Has the Talmud been rejected? Has, has the Gematrias been rejected? 
Has the Zohar and Kabbalah been rejected? Has the teachings of Moses been rejected? Etc., etc., etc. Isaiah 53 is talking about the rejection of everything that comes with Judaism, Israel, Hashem, the Torah, the oral Torah. It's talking about everything that has been despised and rejected. Now, we're going to get into what affliction is. We're going to get into what bruising is or wounds are. We're going to get into all that because it's very specific on what is going on with this. We also learned last week that the, the, the uh, let me read it, it's extolled, high, lofty, and very loft, very ma'od, that this is a siya, berea, yitzira, absolute. This is the thing pulling up. And when, and when all of the shefa that's been stolen by the hitzonim by the other side is cut off with mila, which is uh, the first, let's see, I don't want to get that wrong. Look at my notes here. That's the first it's the final letter of the first four words is Mim, Yud, Lam, and Hey, Mila will be cut off. As soon as Hashem cuts the Klippa off, as soon as Adam cuts off the Klippa, which means removal of the nations, they can no longer draw the Mashiach Shefa. Because Mashiach in Torah is the written Torah, is the oral Torah, is Messiah ben Yosef, is Messiah ben David, is Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, is the Shekhinah, is Metatron. It is all these things. There, that's, that's why the Goyim have no idea what Mashiach is. When you say Mashiach, which Mashiach? What do you mean, which Mashiach? The Mashiach. It's a part suf. That's why it's written the way it's written in this piece, because there are many, many layers that we have to go through. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, we talked about, you know, this Yaskil. This is the increase of consciousness. It's the increase of Shefa. It's the increase of the lights of Atik Yomim, which is from Keter. And it's also quoted in Daniel, that, that uh, in Daniel 12, where he's talking about, talking about the Yemaskil. And the, that the brilliance will come in. And what is the brilliance? The brilliance is the light of the Zohar. And what does the Gaon of Vilna say? The Mashiach will be revealed through the teachings of the Zohar. So, that is something we are going to dive into today. Um, this is just a little review. The Gona Vilna writes, you know, due to the fall of, of Adam, uh, that the, the externals, the Hitzonim, have captured Isaiah 53 and have held on to it. Because, and uh, another part is because of the sin of the bitter waters, the servant Moshe, and he will reveal the new Torah. And so we, uh, we darshaned out last week that the suffering servant is the Shekhinah, who is in exile, Messiah ben Yosef, Metatron, Moses, Zeranping, Israel, and the Torah secrets, as it, uh, as it has said through last week's class. If you want to go back and look it up, all those sources, they are there for you. So, what is this, what is, uh, they're going to see things they've they're going to see things they've never been told, and they're going to perceive things they've never heard. And as we go into Isaiah fifty three one, what's the first verse say? Who would believe what we have heard? The nations are saying, "Who would believe what we have heard?" Because they are they have just heard the the Torah a the Agadita, the Moses Torah, the Zohar Torah, all the lofty sowed level stuff. This is the stuff they have rejected. 
They still reject it. I see it every day. Oh, the Talmud's, oh, that's just a bunch of writings of old men. Yeah, very wise old men. So, we, uh, there, is a, there is a quote in Torah that says, it's in Psalms, I, I think. It says, all the valleys will be raised up. Moses was uh, uh, buried in a valley. All right? And there's a whole Gemara on the piece. Uh, when the Romans wanted to see where Moses was buried, the rabbis took him out there and he says, oh, he's on that mountain over there. So they go to that mountain over there. And when, and when they get there, they say, oh, yeah, he's on that mountain over there. And it, because it was just oscillating because no person, no man knows where he's buried. So before we get into Ravali on this piece, we're going line by line. We are going to go into the Zohar. So if you have your Zohar book, you'll need to go grab number 17. Bechlach, Lacha, Bechlacha, Beha. And you will need to turn to page 435. 435. And one of the pieces it quotes in here is it quotes this uh, Daniel 1210 that we went over last week. I will, I'm going to read this to you. It's not very long, but you need to listen to it very carefully. We hear that those who toil in the splendor called the Zohar will be wise and shine like the brightness of the firmaments. I'm going to turn to Daniel. It may be a page or two off in your book. It's going to be 88. Look for 88, paragraph 88. Got it? I'm going to turn to Daniel. Right quick like. If you will go to Daniel 12. I didn't bring my other Daniel. This one's translated differently. This one, uh, this one says they will be elucidated and clarified and refined by many people. The wicked will act wickedly and none of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand. But the wise will understand says they must teach every secret and teach others how to be receptive to the light of Torah and to the light of Zohar. At that time, they will be like the dove that was sent from Noah's ark, not like the raven that betrayed his mission. The prophets saw them become connected on three levels, Keter, Teferit, and Yesod, the center column, in, in, in the center, and thus that they shall prosper, be exalted very high, and be connected to the twin messiahs. So, Isaiah 53 starts at, you know, 52, 13. There is a part of this that the servant is those who teach the Torah from the Zohar. They are going to be despised, rejected, but they will be exalted because they are the servant. And thus it says, But the wise shall understand, these are the scholars of the Kabbalah. It says about them, And they who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the ferment, like the Zohar. This refers to those 
that place their effort in the splendor called the Zohar, that is like Noah's Ark, to which are gathered two from a city, seven from a kingdom, and occasionally one from a city, and two from a family, by who comes true. As it says, every son that is born shall be cast into the river. Shemot 122. The secret of the Torah is called the son. That is born means they comprehend the river, is the light of the Torah. Throw him in Hebrew is ta shlik huhu. This is means to teach him taskil ulu. Here's our word taskil again from the, from the root yaskil and yemaskil. Every individual secret that is born to you, teach it the light of the Torah and its soul. It's talking about people. How to be receptive to the light of the Torah and its soul. This is the light of the book of the Zohar and all is due to you. Who is, who caused all this? The raven. Since at that time, you will be like a dove. This alludes to the raven and the dove that Noah sent out from the ark, comparing the Zohar to Noah's ark. There was a, a messenger named after you, like the raven that was originally sent from the ark but did not return from his mission and made his effort forbidden abominations, about which is said that the arrogant are abominable. And he spent his efforts on them because of their money. He did not strive in his mission to cause the righteous to repent. It is if he has not fulfilled his mission of his master. Rabbi Moshe, uh, Moses Cordova, his blessed memory, wrote that it refers to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was worthy to be the redeemer of Israel, yet he faltered with the golden calves and sinned and caused many others to sin. He is compared to the raven that betrayed his mission. The secret of the dove that entered the depths of the sea shall come true with you. And likewise, you will enter the deep chasms of Torah. This is what is written about the prophet Jonah. Jonah is Yonah. Yonah means dove. Israel is my dove. For you did cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea. Yonah 2.4, meaning in the sea of the Torah. Then there will be Chokmah. Hesed and Netzach on the right. Of those, David said, the right hand of Hashem does valiantly. Who sits at the right hand of Hashem? Hokma, Hesed, Netzach. The right hand of Hashem is exalted. The right hand of Hashem does valiantly. Psalms 118, 15 through 16. The three levels of the left become connected which are Bina, Gavura, and Hod, and the, th and the three levels in the center, which are Keter, Teferet, and Yesod, are attached to the right and left, since the central column is attached to the right and left. In this way, the ten spherotes are perfected, including the first three spherot. Since the prophet saw you become connected in these three levels, Keter, Teferet, and Yesod, in the center, he pronounced upon you this verse, Behold, my servant shall prosper, which is the secret of Yesod, the tzaddik. He will be exalted and extolled, is the secret of Tiferet, and very high, Isaiah 52, 13, the secret of Keter. You will be connected and attached to the twin messiahs. David spoke of the three on the right, Hokmah, Hesed, and Netzach, the Messiah, son of David, and the right hand with Shem three times, as mentioned nearby. In relation to the left ones, Bina, Guvura, and Hod, which is the Messiah's son Ephraim, Messiah ben Joseph, Messiah ben David. Messiah ben David is the right arm, Messiah ben Joseph is the left arm, the twin Messiahs. He said of the one aspect on the left column, I shall not die, and further said, but I will live. Ode Yosef High. Psalms 118.17. So, 
who is who does the Zohar say is 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 being talked about in this piece? The ones that teach the Kabbalah. The tzaddik that teaches Kabbalah. So let's now turn to the and if if you don't if you don't believe it, just ask somebody what they think about Kabbalah. And they will reject it. Now, we read uh, Berko, uh 5A, uh, 5A, 3, and 4 last week, and where the, the suffering servant uh, in the piece is Moses. And so <clears throat> we now have... We now have sources that say, let's see, let me find our, I, I kind of got it on a bun bunch of different pages here. The part suf will 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 look like this. We have we have the uh, Shekhinah, which is one of the suffering servants. We have Metatron. We have Messiah ben Yosef. We have Israel. We have the secrets of the Torah. Um, we have Moses. We have, who else here? The rabbis, Mashiach himself is rejected. They reject Israel's Mashiach and they accept Jesus' Mashiach. So they reject Mashiach in and of itself. They uh, reject Zeron Pin, the secrets of the the secrets of the Torah and the Tzaddik and the Zohar says also that they will reject Gematrias. That's the tenth one. Now, why would they reject Gematrias? Because the Hebrews letters are numbers. And the only way to quantify something in 4D land is to know it's gematria. That's how you can quantify it, like a recon peen, 370 lights, or the shock denim, or the par denim. Everything has its number. Or Moshe, or Shiloh. All of these things have numbers because the number, the gematria, is directly connected to the Hebrew word because every Hebrew letter is a number. Sinai is the same gematria as Sulam, which is the same gematria as Merkava because gematria is part of the Remez and all of the oral Torah is rejected. And once you reject, as Isaiah 53 says, once you reject the Mashiach, which is Torah, and everything that goes along with it, you start rejecting everything. Israel, Metatron, the Shekhinah, everything. You will reject it all. The Talmud, the sages, the, all the Agadita, everything is going to be rejected. This is what Isaiah 53 is telling us, all right? And gematria is a big one because the gematrias are the measurements and the dimensionality. It gives you dimensionality of so many cubits. This is so many this, this is so many that. This is this, like in the 
class of truma we did. It took us three weeks to do the parts of truma because everything was the dimension, make the arc this big, make the poles this long, make the rings this big, make the curtain this long, make the blue, blah, 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 blah. All right? And within that is all the gematrias of how to do it because you're trying to replicate something in 4D, spirituality, in 3D. It doesn't have a measurement dimension up there. It has a gematria. So they're rejecting the, the remis, the higher level, much less the sowed code of the matter. Now, Who would believe it? What we have heard. From whom has the arm of Hashem been revealed? We just talked about the arm of Hashem in the Zohar. Formerly, he grew like a sapling or like a root from arid ground. He had neither form nor grandeur. We saw him, but without such visage that we could desire him. He was despised and isolated from men, a man's pains and a he a man's a, a man of pains and accustomed to illness, as one from whom we would hide our faces, he was despised, and we had no regard from him. But in truth, it was our ills that he bore, and our pains that he carried carried. But we regarded him disease stricken by God and afflicted. That word afflicted there is Mitzorah, leprous. Who do we know that had leprosy on his hand? Moses. Was Jesus leprous? That's that word is that word afflicted is Mitzorah. So we know they're rejecting Moses. So let's look real quick. Man, we'll just, we'll just go through it in order as I wrote it. How about that? He said, who would believe the arm of Hashem revealed? This is Israel. Who would believe they were actually right? That they are actually Mashiach? The wise ones of Israel, when, when Mashiach is revealed, who are the wise ones? Those who know the Kabbalah. The Zohar. Why are they amazed? It is well known that prophecy does not dwell on a hakim unless he has gibor, strength, power. In other words, prophecy does not dwell on a weak person. And he and this uh, prophecy dwells on a strong person that has imposing stature. But this one will be poor, and he will not have those qualities. Israel has been beaten for 6,000 years. They're decimated. They're not big men of stature and, you know, and gibor, power. Therefore, they will be amazed at the arm of Hashem. What is the arm of Hashem? His hesed, as we read in the Zohar. Hokma hesed netzach. That dwells upon the person like this more than anyone else. However, with the ascent of King Mashiach is according to the ascent of Zeron Pin, literally. As, Z as Zeron Pin, as Adam, starts ascending through the levels from, the, from doing all the beaver, of collecting all the sparks and cutting off the Hitzonim, it is going to is going to elevate so quick, they're going to be amazed and in wonderment of his success, of his yaskil, because of the lights that are upon him. Because he has, has seven, he, he grows seven times through seven aspects and will ascend according to the sin of Zeron Pin. Seven, seven aspects, seven times, count the omer. What is this sapling? The, like a sapling is the translation. The word sapling here is the word unica. The word unica in Hebrew means a nursling. He will go 
Because of his ascent, he will go from a nursling to a child, from a child to an, a young adult, from a young adult to full maturation. This is Zah getting his lights. Adam, shoo, coming up. This is why it uses the word sapling, because it's going to go from a sapling to a, quote, full tree overnight. This is going from Kotnut to Godlut. The term Unica is nursling. We know the root of Jesse is coming out of the Klippa. Why is the root of Jesse coming out of the Klippa? Because Ruth was a non-Jew until she converted. And this is what is called arid ground. Formerly, he grew like a sapling or like a root from arid ground, from the klepa of, the, of Ruth. But the whole time, it's growing from Unica. It has no form nor grandeur. Why? Because it is the place that is causing it. Just like when the children of Israel uh, were in the desert, and they sinned at every one of those places. The name of the sin that they sinned was the name of the place. They were, they were in the tohu trying to correct it. And they did. They completed their mission. Now, they all died there, but they completed their mission. That's why they're resurrected first. They are the highest of the high. Because the, the only sin that Israel did was the, that the leaders did was uh, the sin of the spies. Because the heir of Ra, the people, the mixed multitude, did everything else. But the rest of them were doing the tikkun. The children of Israel were. Because it's the place that caused it. As soon as he is immersed and comes out into Kedusha, the wisdom of a man enlightened, the wisdom of a man enlightens his face. As Ecclesiastes 8.1 says. So turn to Ecclesiastes 8.1. So Rob Bali brings this as a proof text. Did you find it yet? Uh, let's see. Annotations Ecclesiastes. 8.1. Who is like the wise man? And who knows what things mean. A man's wisdom lights up his face and the boldness of his face is transformed. Ecclesiastes 8.1. Therefore, this causes the flip to beautiful in the eyes that behold him, measure for measure. They have thrown their trash at Israel the whole time. It's going to flip and they will become, it will become the beauty to behold. These are the eyes that will behold him. Because it will change from Messiah ben Yosef to Messiah ben David. This is known as the death of Messiah ben Joseph. Why? Because it's now Messiah ben David. Not that it's dead, it's just inside Messiah ben David now. It doesn't exist anymore. The reason that he is mocked and rejected is because he was in Kotnut and in the Klippa and was darkened in his beauty. The term despised here is not despised, it's din. Because he was din. Gematria 64 the whole, the whole time he was wounded and afflicted was due to the klepa of the den because Adam had to come to the tohu because that's where all the sparks fell. You got to go pick them all up. Where are they at? They're in the sewer. What happens when you're in the sewer? You get it on you. It mentions the term despised twice. He was despised and isolated from men, a man's pains, and accustomed to illness, 
as one from whom we hide our faces. He was despised. He was it, it with no regard for him. It mentions despised twice. Why is this? One is his own self. The other is in the eyes of others. He, was, he hid and he kept away from people to be uh, to, kept away from people and preferred to be alone all the days of his suffering as to not mix with society and others. What do the Jews do? They keep to themselves. They don't mix with other people. They stay within their own group because they are despised. Who are the people isolated? The sowed, these are the sowed of the supernal lights due to the klepa that is attached to them. Because the klepa is so dense, the supernal lights gather together and hide from the, from the tohu. Why is he accustomed to illness? Because there is no wound like the klepa. The heart feels the pain of the body. The klepa is attached to the penimi, the inner, and, is, and this means it is accustomed to illness. The Jews are accustomed to what they have to deal with every day because he knows the state of reality. He knows he's in the toe, in the klepa. And why does it say hit our faces? At the time... In the Hester Panim, he is separated from his root. He is considered nothing. If they would know, then they would call him great. If they knew, if the nations knew what the Jews were, they would call them great. But because the face is hidden, they reject him and despise him as nothing. As he took the tacoon for all of it. So the Jews are suffering because the world sins because the world does not do Torah at all. They have their own religions, which is a sin. Therefore, the Jews suffer, which is Messiah ben Yosef, which is the secret of the Holocaust. Everyone takes responsibility for their own sins as is known, yet the Mashiach makes his tikkun and opens up the path for all the others. It is the Jews who open up the path because they are light to the nations for all to come and learn the truth. We are living proof. This is the secret of Prat versus Klau, the Mashiach and the Mashiach as a person and as a collective. Because from the because from the tikkun of the heart causes the tikkun of the limbs. As the heart goes, the body goes. Israel's the heart, the nations are the body. Him here is the part suf that we talked about earlier. Israel, the Shekhinah, Moshe, Messiah ben Yosef, the Torah, the Talmud, the Tzaddik, the Gemara, the secrets of Torah, all those things. All those things suffer because of the sins of the nations. If the nations would do right, poof, but they won't. They thought that the, that the quality of Din had afflicted him because of his sin. But in truth, he was going to suffer for their sins as Moshe was afflicted, Matsora with leprous. The secret of the matter is this. There are two kinds of transgressions, a Pesha and an Avon. A Pesha is a deliberate sin, and an Avon is iniquity. The first type of sin is that a, that a person causes to himself. The second type of sin is because a person cannot control himself. 
So the first one is deliberate. I know it's wrong. I'm going to do it anyway. I know human sacrifice and drinking blood and eating dead flesh is wrong. I'm going to do it anyway. And the second one is he can't control himself. So the Mashiach carries every type of sin because every type of sin is also a part suf. The word Mekad, 65, is the same gematria as din, which means disease. The word they use here for diseased is, is gematria 65, which is the same gematria as din. The chastisement. What is the chastisement? That word there is musar. Musar means ethics. The ethics. What is the ethics? What is called the ethics of our father? <laughs> Perky avot. What do they say when you're studying the basic Talmud? It is taught in musar. This is called chastisement. See, if you don't know the Hebrew terms and what they're doing and what they're saying and what they're meaning, you will make your own religion. Because the ethics, the Musar is for his benefit. That word benefit there in Hebrew is shalom. Shalom means peace, but it also means zibug, to make union. Because the tzaddik rules Yesod. What did we just read in the Zohar? It's about Yesod. It's about the tzaddik. Because the tzaddik rules Yesod, the word here is Moshel. He governs over. The, this whole thing is Yesod. This is what it means for our benefit, for our shalom. Without the chastisement, without the Musar, of the tzaddik, there would be no peace. Through the wounds, what are these wounds? Sometimes it's even uh, translated as bruised. It was bruised for our iniquity, right? It's the, the, the word here in Hebrew is used when the blood is inside and it does not come out like a bruise. These are the wounds, the bruises of Mashiach, the hits that Talmud takes, Gematria takes, Metatron takes, the Shekhinah, the Israel, Moshe, Messiah ben Yosef, etc., etc. <clears throat> every time they reject it, that is every time you get somebody rejecting Talmud, Zohar, Oral Torah, that is Isaiah 53. To the T. He is considered as dead. Oh, hold on. Because the klipa has grabbed at his root, his root and he cannot be released. This is why it's called bruises or wounds. Because the klipa has it and it won't release it. Because the klipa has attached to the shefa like a parasite. He is considered as dead as if the entire nation was hit and is being healed. When these parts Sufim return, all of Israel and creation will be healed. This is why it says our and we. Our is ones for Israel the other one is for the nations. Let's read it. Was pained because of our rebellious sins and oppressed through our iniquities and the, and the musar, the chastisement was up him on, on our, our shalom is for Israel. Though through his, through his bruising, the, the, taking the licks for all of it, we were healed. These are the nations. And the next verse, we have all strayed away like sheep, talking about the nations. <clears throat> From the book, Gate of Verses, 
Vayechi. So turn in your Torah to Genesis 49. 10, 49, 8. Forty-nine and eight. Judah, you, your brothers, shall acknowledge your hand will be at your enemy's nape. Your father's sons will prostrate themselves to you. A lion cub is Judah. From the prey, my son, you elevated yourself. He crouches, lies like a lion, like an awesome lion who dares rouse him. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, Messiah ben David, nor a scholar from among the descendants, the Tzadik, Messiah ben Yosef, until Shiloh arrives. And his, his will be the assembling of the nations. Now, what is Shiloh? Shiloh. What is Shiloh? Shiloh is Gematria 345. Who else is Gematria 345? Moses. Moses is the deliverer, the redeemer. Turn to Malachi. Malachi 3.22. If you have a King James, it's going to be in chapter 4. It'll be somewhere around 4.4 4 or something like that. It says, remember the Torah of Moses, my servant, my Evid. Just before uh, the writings. Last Friday. 322, remember the Torah of my servant Moses. Of Moses, my servant. Again, we see Moses is a servant, as was the affliction, etc., with the Mitzorah on his hand. Onkelos and Rashi both agree. This verse, Shiloh, is talking about Mashiach. As it says, she means a gift. Lo means to him. The verse is, pri is the primary source that Mashiach will come. This verse means Judah will never lose the entire Shepha. You know, Israel will always have the Shepha because the scepter will not depart. It will not go to Rome and Constantine and Christianity. It won't do it or to Islam and Allah. And it will increase in kingship. And then, the nations will assemble and pay homage to Israel. As it says in the verse. So, the Arizal says, we have informed you that the head of Adam had nephesh, Ruach, Neshama, the three or lower le levels of the soul. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, Yechida. Those are the five levels of the soul. It had Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama from Bia. Now the Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, and Chaya are the four major part Sufim in Atzilu, which are called the Nukva, Zeron Pim, Abba and Ima. Therefore, Adam is called Hokma, supernal Abba. And Adam is Zeron Pin of Atzilu, which is known as Adam Harishon, the second Adam. Who is the first Adam? Adam Kadmon, primordial. So this Adam in Genesis is number two, called Adam Tenyane, the lesser. Lesser Adam, greater Adam. 
Afterwards, when his stature was diminished to a hundred ama, that's a cubit is an ama. A ama comes from the word Abba and Ima put together. He was known as the hala to the world, the bread to the world, the bread of life. This is Adam Harishon in the garden. So too, when Moses comes, he made great tikkun in Adam and ascended to Ima from Zun, from Zanuk. With this, Ada, Abba and Ima are in union, which is known as Chaya. Regarding Messiah and David, as it says in Isaiah 52, 13, the Ma'od is Moses. Adam, Moses is Adam. Where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are exalted, high, and lofty. The matter is this, Messiah ben David will have Haya of Abba. He will have all the levels higher than Moses. Moses was the first shepherd, and he will be the final shepherd. As the Midrash says in Micah 7, 15 through 16. So turn to Micah. Getting to go to some books we don't normally go to. So who is the first and the last? Who is the first shepherd of Israel? Moses. Who is going to be the last shepherd of Israel? Moses. So if you have a Torah, go to Micah 7. And look at verse 14. Shepherd your people with your staff. Uh-oh, got another staff from our staff class. The flock of your heritage. Let them dwell in isolation in the forest and fertile ground. Let them graze in the Bashan and in the Gilead as in the days of old. Here's your verse right here. As in the days when you left the land of Egypt, I will show you wonders. The nations will see and be ashamed of their unveiling power, and they will, will place a hand over their mouths. Uh-oh, their mouths will be shut. Sounds a whole lot like Isaiah 52, 13, 14, doesn't it? And their ears will become deaf. They will lick the dirt like the snake and the creatures that crawl on the ground. So remember when Moses was in Egypt. Let me borrow you. Staff there, Brandon. He had a staff. And when he threw the staff on the ground, it became a serpent. There's nothing new under the sun. As it was in those days, it will be again. The secret of Adam and the Nakash, Moses and Pharaoh, Mashiach, and the nations. It's a ratio. Thank you, Brandon. So there we have our staff and our knockoff once again, our serpent. Mashiach is Moses. Therefore, Shiloh, as is Gematria 345 of Moshe, as the Zohar says, because Moses took us out first and will take us out last. Shiloh and Moses are inseparable. There is nothing new under the sun. The only difference between Moses and Mashiach is when the Haya is added. It will be first and last. The first one will redeem you and the last one that redeems you. Now, if you will look at the word Wonders, I will show you wonders. The word here is Pela, wonders. The word Pela is, if you change the letters around, it's Elif. Elif is a thousand, okay? Elif is a thousand. So 
Give me that board right there real quick. I, I saw this when I walked in class. If you'll hold this right here for me, Brandon. So the Havaya is 26. There was 26 generations from Adam to Moshe. There were 974 generations of Tohu in the worlds of Akudim, Nekudim, prior, which is a thousand. When Moses came, he was the Eliph, the thousand. That was show them wonders. So Moses, I'm going to send you to Egypt, and you're going to show them wonders. Now, turn to Zechariah 8, 6. Eight four. Try eight four. Let's start at eight four. How much time we got, Brandon? We ain't even read the Gemara yet. Uh, about six minutes. Six minutes. We will read the Gemara. It needs to go in this class. Thus says Hashem, Master of Legions. Who is Master of Legions? Who is the Oat? The Hashem Tseva Oat? Metatron. Old men and old women will come and sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with his staff in his hand. Remember from our staff class? Because of advanced age and the streets and the cities will be filled with boys and girls. Thus says, thus says Hashem, Master of Legions, Tzivaot, or Metatron, just as it will be wondrous, the Aleph, Aleph, rather, the Pela, in, my, in, in the eyes of the remnant of the people in those days, so it would be wondrous in my eyes. It's going from 3D to 4D, just like we taught in the staff class. This is the secret of Isaiah 53 and the wonderment because they're because of they're going to despise him so much it's measure for measure this is this is coming uh from uh, the Isaiah uh, 52 um they they won't believe what they have they won't seeing what they were not told this is the yaskil this is the increase all right so turn if you brought your Talmud, turn to, if you have it at home, it's Sanhedrin. This is the last book of Sanhedrin. I believe there's three. So we're going Sanhedrin 98. Sanhedrin 98. 98B3. The Gomorrah disputes the concerns of Messiah. The world was created only for Adam, I mean only for David. But Shmuel says it was created for Moses. And Rav Yochanan says it was created only for Messiah. What did they just do there? It was created for David. Oh, it was created for Moses. It was created for Messiah. It's all the same thing. What is his name? What is his name? So they're going to tell you the name of Mashiach right here. Ready? The, the school of Rav Shila says Shiloh is his name, as it is stated, until Shiloh comes. We already, we already darshened out. Shiloh and Moses are interchangeable. The school of Rav Yanni says Yanon is his name, as is stated, my name... Uh, May his name endure forever as long as the sun, may his, as long as the, as the sun, the S-U-N, may his name, con, uh, may his name continue, you know. The school of Rabbi Hanina says, Hanina is his name, as it is stated, for I will give you mercy, Hanina. Some say Menachem ben Hizkia is his name, as it is stated, because a comfort to receive my spirit is far from me. The rabbis say, see, they're building a whole part suit. The rabbis say Metzora is his name, is from the uh, Metzora of the house of Rebbe is his name. For it is stated, indeed, it was our disease that he bore and our pains that he endured, whereas we considered him plagued, smitten by God and afflicted. Now, if you'll, uh, in, in, in the note there uh, in 32, if you want to look, 
Genesis uh, 49.10, which we went over and interpreted referring to Mashiach, is on the basis of the verse, a gift shall be offered uh, to Hashem, Isaiah 18.7. In the Midrash, uh, it talks about all the nations are destined to bring a gift to Israel and to King Mashiach, for Shiloh is, to, is made of the word Shai, which means gift, and Lo, which means to him, where the nations will bring a gift to him. Now turn the page. Rav Nachman said, if Messiah is among the living, he is like someone like me, as it is stated. And their prince shall be one of their own, and their ruler shall emerge from the mist. <clears throat> so they went from the clow to the prot. Now, what they did in here, I've, I've never ever really seen them do uh, in here. But if you'll look on the first note there, on the top of the page, Mitzorah from the house of Rebbe signifies Messiah's suffering as explained above. Each of these attributes are found in Messiah. Why? It's a part suf from the Maharal, who explains more along similar lines. The word Mashiach is an acronym for Menachem. There's your M. Shiloh, the uh, Yinon, and Hanina. Those, what they did is each word they gave spells Mashiach because he will have all these virtues. He will, he will have, he will demonstrate, it's demonstrated in all the names. He will have mercy. He will be like Moses. He will have the scepter. He will have all these things. It's a formula. The Agatha is a formula. Don't ever forget that. So, that's why you should be looking to Torah and to Moses and to Israel and to the Shekhinah and into Metatron, and into the secrets of the Torah, and into the Zohar, and into the Talmud, and into Gematria, and all these things, because these things are the Evid of Hashem. And the Torah is amazing, and sages are amazing, and we will continue with verse 5 in chapter 53 next week.